and Harry comes face to face with the devastating loss of his hairline. That's The Estate tomorrow at 8.30. But before we go live to Eamon and the gang, there's just time to look forward to what's coming up later tonight on Channel One. At 9.30, we have an in-depth documentary about the downfall of Jacob Hamilton Mann, which forced this year's early election. That's The Night Visitor at 9.30, poorly narrated by Patrick Bannon. At 10.30, Adrian Atkinson Blimey is here for a special episode of Incisors, where he sinks his teeth into the current cost of living crisis by interviewing a multimillionaire, a nurse and a bin man to see who is suffering the worst. Here's a clue, it's not the millionaire. At 11.30, fasten your seatbelts as it's time for Wayne to Spirit Whistle to lead another terrifying exploration in live and spooky. And tonight, they'll be asking if the old brewery in Arsenal Street... No, I'm not getting into a fight with Dave. You're just going to have to go up there and explain it to him. I mean, he's just counting for fuck's sake. Yeah, I know. I'm a bit scared of him too. You know, a bit. But, and my face is more valuable than yours. So if anyone's going to get punched, it's probably better that it's you. Yeah, you'll probably get lucky. Probably just kicking the... Yep, standing by. Good evening. I'm Eamon Tightly. Behind me is a true TV legend. Now running for Prime Minister, everyone's handiest man, Peter Clement. Now, Peter thinks he's here tonight to record a special reunion edition of Just the Job, but as always, viewers, you know better. Ten seconds, places. It's time. Let's start the show. In five, four, three, four, three. When you're feeling restless and you just can't stay the course, I got just the job. When you smell an odor but you just can't find the source, I got just the job. Get me Slip it down your trail And once I'm finished pumping This is your show need again Cause that's just a job Thank you girls Tracking stuff Good evening friends And yes it's true I can hardly really believe it myself But we are back with this special one off reunion episode Of Just the job. And to be clear, it's the show that you remember. With the old psychic, little Jimmy's chisel, some top tips on how to improve your DIY. And of course, some special guests from Just the Job's illustrious past. And I know what you're all thinking. Oh, there's an election coming up. But there'll be no politics tonight. Not on this show. And that is a Peter Clement promise. So let's kick tonight off with a slightly askance look at the mighty bevel. Because you never know. Just hold it right there, please. Oh, come on. It's you. Yeah, it certainly is me. Oh, you naughty, naughty fucking... Sorry, Frank, Frank, did you know about this? Yeah, look at that face. Go on, you fucking did. You fuckers. You thought you were here tonight to record a special reunion edition of Just the Job. I can't believe it. But tonight, Peter Clement, these are the bits of your life! <laughs> Let's get you back to the studio, you fuckers on the night, you. And I can't believe it, those bloody dancers you about all the way along. You. They're all part of this way, Peter, mind a step there. I don't know. I can't believe it, honestly, I've done it. You're right, Eric. Yeah, sorry, Dave. Just got the weirdest feeling of deja vu. That's right. Really strong. Oh, that's really unsettled me, that has. You ever get that? What, deja vu? Yeah. No, mate, never once. It's really the strangest. Oh, Eamon, have a good show. Too easy. Thank you very much indeed. Of course, I've got to have you vote. So, Eamon, how long have you been uh, planning this, Eamon? Eamon, how long have you been planning this, Eamon? Eamon? Peter Gordon Clement, 
You were born October 10th, 1923, in the northern town of Rothering, to Fanny and Martin Clement. I know, right fucking tear away they made of you. That's right, they got up at the crack of dawn to make the journey down to the capital by coach. No, I didn't. It's your infamous old man. No, it isn't. And her long-suffering husband, Fanny and Martin Clement. You're not there. Uh, no, 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 no. Let's just stick to the script, see what happens. You pop your piece in there and then head over to the sofa. Right, you old pet. Hello, pets. Make the best of us. And not the worst. Chelsea, bloody butt! <laughs> Pizza, bloody Clement! Oh. <laughs> OK, lovely, lovely. Let's all take a seat now. That's great. So, um, lovely to have you both here. Uh, let me ask you, um, what was life like for Peter growing up in the Clement house? You know, uh, well, I think, well, for both of us, really, it would have, well, it was about his father's, right? I mean, mine, well, he were never there because, what, what with work and, and the pub, of course. But I reckon that were a lot easier than it were for our PT because there's no mark of a father. We're always there. I mean, mine most of the time. Yeah, yeah she did, love. Mine, but, I mean, I mean, what, what about when she went to bingo or, or you know, when she took that part-time evening job? I kept her safe. <laughs> Come on, P.T. love. I've spent my whole bloody life trying to make up for the lack of love off me pa, right? But, and I'm sorry to say this, love, but P.T. here, well, he... He spent his whole life trying to make up for the lack of happiness. Oh, that's not fair. I had a good childhood, for the most part. You didn't, P.T. For the most part. You uh, didn't, P.T. Sorry, love, but well, neither of us did. Well, that got serious quickly. Uh, Chelsea, what's your name? Uh, Chelsea, Chelsea Bonds. Do you want me number? Chelsea Bonds, everyone, with the first of the bits of your life. <laughs> so, how are you? Are you married? How many kids have you? No bones for me, love. I mean, I did get pregnant once, you know, but uh, I couldn't keep it. I mean, it was during the war. I didn't even know whose it were, to be honest. But, um, well, you know, then something went wrong, you know, when they... And then after that, I just couldn't have any more. Oh, so... Chelsea, it's awful. Yeah, it is, love, but then that's life, isn't it? It is awful sometimes, but you just got to keep on fighting. That you do. <gasps> oh. In 1938, you were a 15-year-old at Rothering Elementary, but already you had quite the reputation as a ladies' man. Who's this, Peter? Well, if you don't know my voice by now, we may well have lost the election. Well, it's Julia Salisbury. No, it isn't. It's your childhood sweetheart, Chelsea Bond. She has literally just been on, Amen. I think they called me early. Yeah, something's gone wrong with the scheduling. Some prick called Dave, apparently. Shall we? <laughs> he definitely won't lie there. Chelsea. <laughs> Chelsea. Julia. Yeah, it says Chelsea Julia. in the script. Yeah, it says Chelsea in the script. Would you like to call me Chelsea? Actually, like yeah, that'd be, be really helpful. Chelsea? Right. Actually, uh, yeah, that'd be really Excellent. So, Chelsea, let me ask you this. What do you think we could see in Peter way back then that could have predicted his path to household name and now aspiring Prime Minister? Well, I mean, obviously, I, I wasn't there, of course. You're one of his childhood sweethearts, according to the script. You're one of his childhood sweethearts. Seems unlikely, given our ages. Given our ages. Can you talk about it anyway? Can you talk about it anyway? Um, um, well, uh, I well, would uh, imagine that, uh, uh, that Peter imagine was, was quite charming that, uh, in his Peter heyday and, and probably left behind a, a trail of broken hearts. Uh, just a couple. A trail of broken hearts. And I regret them both. 
an enormous amount. Oh, how romantic. Julie Handbrake, everybody. <laughs> See you for, for the finale. Who wants to sing, apparently? Can you sing? Yes, we'll find out. Well, uh, before we bring our next guest on, let's have a look at a classic clip from Just the Job. It's on that monitor there, Peter, if you'd like to take a look. So we're trying this new segment called I'll Drink And that's about two minutes. No, I'm going for a closer look, see if it cheers me up a bit. Uh, it was an idea that Peter and Jimmy came up with at the pub one night, I think. Anyway, <laughs> it was not going very well. The yep, bottoms up. Feisty and the contestant beat up the makeup girl. And the following week we had Skinny. Interesting choice. I'll drink to that. Uh. <laughs> yeah, there's a drink. Yeah, why not? Got to keep the old grey matter lubricated after all. Can we reset, please? We've seen this one. It's the drinking guy. According to the script, it's little Jimmy Chisel next, Eric. Is it little Jimmy Chisel? I keep telling you, Eamon, I'm not in charge of that. For God's sake, how hard can it be? I mean, they're all out there. The guests are in the holding area. In the right order. In the right bloody order. One, two, three, four, five, six. You count them in! I know, Eamon, I know. One, two, three, four, five, six, Eric. Not two, six, four, one, three, five, or whatever <laughs> random gobbledygook happens to spill out of your head. Ten seconds. Little Jimmy Chisel, please, Eric. Okay, we're going in five, four, three. We never did do that segment again. What fantastic memories there from one of the nation's most beloved TV shows. Now, Just the Job had two successful runs, of course, from 58 to 64, and again from 1972 to 1976. And across many, many of those shows, there was always one man. By your side. I have an enormous tool up me. Ah, Christ! Oh, no, he's Peter Clement. Not so enormous. That's right, a man who needs no introduction, but we're giving him one anyway. It's not your sidekick of almost 13 years, little Jimmy Chisel. It's... Christ, it's some sort of bloody yeti. Christ, it's some sort of bloody yeti. Ah, no, 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 no. Not there, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, you're certainly in a position to give us a unique insight into you this bit. Give us a unique insight into you this bit. This Yarkistanian special reserve vodka. It light fire in you. Men have given up their virgin children for just one glass of this. That's probably not true. Uh, for every drop you spill, I cut off one finger with this. Oh, that's a bloody big one you've got there. <laughs> yes, it, it was my grandmother's. Uh, put it away, mate. Stop the theatrics and pour the bloody drinks. Stop the theatrics and pour the bloody drinks. Surprised they let you into the studio with that, you know. Thought there would have been uh, some sort of search or something. You don't search an ambassador, pal. Anyway, he's got diplomatic immunity. He could cut your tongue out and they couldn't touch him. Cut your tongue out and they couldn't touch him. Down in one, yes. Like village sex goat. <laughs> I don't even want to know what that means. I don't even want to know what that means. <laughs> and he's having a drink. Oh, Jesus, erase your quick sniffing. Oh, Christ, Christ Ivan. What the hell is that? What that, Peter Clement, is, is the reason that you wake up in morning in cell facing firing squad, yes. <laughs> Another. Oh, let's just, just give us just, just a minute, pal. That first one is still stripping the skin off my stomach. It's still stripping the skin Peter Clement and I fight in war together, Dazzly men. Uh, units are in Konislava. We are ambushed. Smoke is everywhere. It's burning my eyes. I'm separated from my squad. Lost in fog. I hear bullet whiz past the ear. I hear you hear bullet whiz past the ear. I was in a fairly competitive darts match once. No, no, not really. Out of smoke come men 
wearing a mask. Smoke is not just smoke, you see, it's a poison gas. He come over to me, take off mask and put on my face. He lead me out of fog. We share mask, pass back and forth. He bring me to cellar under shop. We collapse there, coughing out muck from lungs and crying. Five days we were there, at what we could find. Mainly dog food. And a tin of peaches, but we did spill most of it fighting over. The morning of sixth day, all is quiet above. We venture out. No one is there. It's like, uh, how you say? Ghastly town. Ghost town. Ghastly. Nothing but Ghost corpses. Town. Cinders. Corpses. No one is there. Cinders. Everybody is gone. Everybody is we gone. fight to death over small town and we fight to death over small town. Nobody wanted it anyway. We didn't even Nobody find out who won that day. We didn't even Nobody find out who won that day. Everybody lose. Everybody lose. Except maybe us. Except maybe us. It took nearly four weeks. Crossing country before we got to command. By the time we reached it, we'd had a few scrapes. And we knew we'd be friends for life. And we knew we'd be friends for life. He's having a drink. So what are the differences, would you say, between the on-screen and off-screen versions of Peter Clement? Simple. On-screen... Peter Clement never had to kill anyone. Ah, yes, and actually we've got some archive footage here which shows exactly what you're talking about. Oh, dear God, I hope we don't. Uh, <laughs> let's go to that now, shall we? Let's go to that now, shall we? Well, when it's a fiddly task, I know a little fella who's just the job. Let's turn to my trusty seven-inch... Um, my trusty... My trusty... Uh, Who's been messing with my tools? Who's been messing with my tools? I'm not kidding, Frank. Someone's been messing with my tools. He should be here. She should be there. And this fella's all wonky look. LJ! LJ! Tool me up! Don't, don't give me that shit. Have you been using my tools? I wouldn't touch your tools, boss. Everyone knows they're the love of your life. I'm not doing a bit, LJ. Huh? Someone's been in here and mucked everything up. Should we just cut here? No! Frank! No! We should not just fucking cut! Let's keep the cameras rolling and see who's getting fired, shall we? No one's getting fired, Peter. He hates it when people use his tools. Not helping, Jim. Who's been at my fucking tools? No one's been at your tools. Remember half an hour ago when you came back from lunch, staggering round here trying to find somewhere to piss? You knocked them off. You did it. So I picked them up, like I always do, put them back in, so you wouldn't have to. Because the only one messing with your tools is you. OK? OK? So I... Yes. So I... Yes. When I... Again. Yes. Again. Yes. <sighs> well, this is bloody awkward. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Sorry, LJ. Such a dangly twat bash. Who's been at my tools? <laughs> uh, well, viewers, I think we've all learned something today. Don't get plastered at lunchtime. Oh, no, 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 we're never going to learn that. Hey, viewers. No, what I've learned today is... What I've learned today is... Always set your toolbox back from the edge of the shelf. I'll be misfiling the Indies next, honestly. I'll be misfiling the Indies next, honestly. <laughs> oh, he's proper angry now. Where did you show that, Eric? What? Where did you show that? Seven years of footage, and you show a clip that makes me look like a complete prick. It's a very human moment. Don't ambush me, Eric. I'm not in the fucking mood. Don't ambush me, Eric. I'm it's very unpredictable drink. You try. Oh, no, I, I think it'd probably kill me. <laughs> to be fair, I was pretty pissed that day. And Dotty and I went for a, some pints and chases at the Bull and Bollock. Is that an actual pub? I'm not normally an angry man. I'm not normally... Unless he wants his share of peaches. Another. Uh, do you think that's a good idea? There is nothing wrong with anger, my friend. Anger is how we survive, Kolislava. Anger 
Ah, I'm too old for anger. And yet it's still lurk within you. And yet it's still lurk within you. To the blood in us all. To the blood in us all. <laughs> Yep, and that's it. I think we can safely yeah, say we've got him yeah, drunk. Ladies and gentlemen, um, um, magnificent Sasquatch. <laughs> Channel your rage. It makes you mad. In 1941, long before just the job ever occurred, you, like so many men of your generation, were conscripted into the army to go to the continent to fight. And it was on those very battlefields that the strangest of friendships was born. Wrong guess, sweetie. I suggest you fire Eric. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, shit indeed, Eric. It's your old boss, Dorothy Hammerman. Just to see you as incompetent as ever, Eric. Yes, Eric. Yeah, he's right, we're off the tracks. I'll cross that out. And you're not exactly covering yourself in glory, Eamon. I've seen more flexibility in a union leader. I don't know what I was thinking. What were you thinking? It's a conversation for another time, sweetie. Show must go on. Come on! Yes, Mrs. Hammond. Peasy! Got it with you. Always dotty. For the old times. Why not? Oh, oh, how lovely. Look, they almost match. Here's one finger for the north, two fingers to the south, and we can all apologise tomorrow. Oh, bottom's up. Right, let's get on with it. Ah, right. Uh, uh, thank you for uh, joining us, uh, Miss Hammond. Oh, well, you're very welcome. Go uh, on, ask me the wrong question. We are. Uh, in... What's it like being friends with Peter Clement? Oh, actually, I can't answer that question because, well, actually, it's bloody good fun. Oh, thank you. Dorothy Hammerman, everyone. Nobody has made me cry with love like this man. The nobody has helped me up when I stumbled nobody quite so many times, and I include in that list my somewhat lacklustre parents, God rest their souls. Oh, she barely needed me, truth be told. Oh, bless you, darling, but I think we both know I stumbled repeatedly in those early years. Never noticed it. Oh. Never that's the type of charm that's going to win you the election. We can, but hope. Well, can I hope that when you get there, it's somewhere you can bear to be. It's not like show business, darling. It's politics. They stab you in the front as well. Well, I'd better keep my wits about me then. Good. Be sure you do. Be sure you do. Come on then, Eamon. You can show me off now. Are you sure? Quite certain, sweetie. Are you sure? Uh, Dorothy Hammerman, everybody! <laughs> See you at the end of the big finish, darling. Well, that's what you get there. It's hard to say these two fucking dollars running the show. Oh, shut up, Eric! Oh, shut up, Eric! Ooh, uh, ooh, uh. <laughs> Think we got away with that one? Let's have a clip from Petey! Let's have a clip... And a... A couple of minutes back. Same monitor as before, Eric. Uh, yes, yeah. So, four guests in. Still off track. What's your plan? I'm going to fashion an apology gift out of my own skin for Dorothy Hammerman. I'm thinking a purse, maybe. screaming at each other in our office. Even with the door shut, you could hear the swear words. Actually wasn't uncommon. Peter and Dorothy. <laughs> Are you taking Oh, I bet he's stewing. Are you really trying to piss me off now? I, I, I don't choose this. Yeah, I remember <laughs> fucking Dave. Can we reset everybody? Are, Are you gonna be alright? Yeah, I'll, I'll be fine. Just don't bring that fucking Polly on or I'll burn the fucking studio down. And Tim Hill, he was on the show that very night. Yep, dodgy puppet. Let's skip over it. Hit the ad button again.
sure to be a bit of a hat. She's got nicer legs than Mrs. C. Uh, it's interesting. I, I thought we got somewhere really interesting there, but I felt we wandered off halfway through that last segment, didn't you think? You mean when you started rushing through everything? Yes, it did bring the quality of the show down. Are you saying this is my fault? I, I'm sorry. Am I the one who brings the guests on in the wrong order? No, I'm not Wait, saying that. Wait, let me that. have a go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Did I get that wrong? No, I just mean you don't have to be such a... You have to make a big deal about everything. Such a what? Nothing. No, 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 Eric. Such a what? Such a prick, Eamon. You don't have to be such a prick about things. Thank you, Please, Eamon. No, 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 no. I appreciate your honesty. I, I, I didn't mean it, Eamon. Just... Why don't you just go over there and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to think about your... That's not the only bloody thing you touched. Please, Eamon, don't... There better be a bloody apology. You go over there. She says, if that's your J. Johnny Johnson, she feels sorry for Mrs. C. Right! Obviously, we've had to drop the signal there, so you have never got to see what happened next. But I'll officially reveal... Get it together, I mean, We've got a bloody show to do here. Ten seconds. Peter got an official reprimand from the and the higher ups. Head on! Going in five, four, three. And Polly, she got her head ripped off. Eamon! 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 What? Yeah, stop with all the yelling, will you? Jesus, like being at home with the fucking kids. Right. Haha, suppose we should. Here we go. Unforgettable stuff. But while you took all them. But while you took all them. Well, you took all the... Oh, for fuck's sake, useless <laughs> prick. I'm not a prick, useless mother. Prick. I'm a stick in the river. I'm a cat in the crazy. It's funny because you look like a prat in a jacket. But well, why don't you come over here and say that, Jim? But well, why don't you come over here and say that, Jim? Fucking... Man. You want to start? Because I am in exactly the right move for it. I'm the crumb in the butter. I'm the penny in the pie. I'm the rabbit on the bonfire. Yeah, the shit in the ice cream, pal. Your show's a shamble, and you are a fucking joke. Come over here and say that. I'm already here. Yeah, well, uh, come a little closer then. Mr. Clement, please calm down. He started it. Come back here, you smarmy little oh, guest. Just leave him, please, Mr. Sorry. Here, I'm under attack here. Give me those. Uh, there was someone back there. I, I ran into them. Can we all just calm down, please? You tell that bastard to calm down. I'm armed. Hey, Eamon, you're hardly armed. Ah, I'm not afraid of you, mate. No! Oh! You, mate. Ooh! <laughs> no good, you little mate, to save you now, Eamon. Jesus. Play the music! to pick the next guest. Well, you didn't call anyone, so the machines called Peter's mum and dad. I'm really starting to hate this screen. He's such a sweetie.